Donald Trump has declared war on Facebook and Twitter. He's filed lawsuits, two lawsuits, one against Twitter and Jack Dorsey, one against Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. He's filed these cases in federal district court in Miami, and it's about to go down. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. Donald Trump has filed these cases, and this is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Here's what I'm going to tell you in this video. One, I'm going to tell you what this case is about. Two, I'm going to let you know what his arguments are and what he's arguing for, what he wants. Three, I'm going to let you know what the likelihood response is going to be from these social media companies. Four, I'm going to tell you my personal opinion on his chances of success. And the fifth thing I'm going to talk about is the most important thing that you have to stick around to see. I'm going to talk about how this affects our lives, the threat that we're facing and why we have to pay attention to this case and why we can't be afraid to speak up. Stay tuned for that. Donald Trump is upset. He was kicked off of Twitter, suspended by Facebook to at least 2023. And I did a video earlier this week about a social media platform, new social media platform, Getter, that I thought he might possibly be connected to. And after this step by him, it looks like he has nothing to do with it. It actually looks like he wants nothing to do with it. But what is this case about? This is about him getting relief from the social media companies. What he wants is he wants his accounts reinstituted on Twitter and on Facebook. He had a huge following. It was, it was really huge. And he had a lot of influence. He used these platforms to spread messages to his followers. And quite frankly, a lot of people believe that it had a significant impact on the 2016 election and him winning. I would argue it wasn't the only thing, but that's a story for another video. So one of the things he's doing is he's challenging, he's, he's suing both Facebook and Twitter and Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, and Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, in their professional, official, and personal capacities. He's arguing that they, are, uh, they have been personally involved in interfering with his social media accounts. So that's why he's suing them in their personal capacities. But it's bigger than that. So he's arguing that he wants to be reinstated, reinstated on Facebook and on Twitter. And he's also suing on behalf of other users. So there's specifically named individuals, conservatives, that have felt uh, aggrieved by Facebook because their, their accounts were suspended, interfered with. And he wants to actually turn this into a class action lawsuit. He's arguing that he should be the, the lead plaintiff on this case and his lawyers should be able to, to move forward with this case as representatives of the entire class. One of the things to, to note is he's also arguing, he's arguing that the, his restrictions on Twitter, his getting booted off of Twitter and Facebook were unconstitutional. He's also arguing for the elimination of Section 230, but he's saying that this law had a significant impact in inducing Twitter and Facebook to get him off of their, their platforms. He's also arguing that Democratic lawmakers and Democratic politicians induced and had sway over both of these social media companies in causing them to interfere with his communications and to ultimately kick him off the platform. But what do I think Facebook and Twitter are going to do next? A lot of people may think that the next step Facebook and Twitter make is to move to have this case dismissed. I think they are going to do that, but I don't think that's the first thing they do. I think the first thing they do is file for a change of venue. You see, this case has been filed in the federal district court in Miami. If you look at the terms of service of both Facebook and Twitter, you agree that any cases, any disputes will be filed and will be filed in California. There's a couple of reasons why they may be doing this. First of all, both companies are situated in California. Their lawyers are situated in California. It makes sense that their lawyers are well versed and, and paying attention to California law. That's why I believe the first thing they're going to do is move for a change of venue. The second thing I think they're going to do is file to have this case dismissed. What are their chances of succeeding? As Crocodile Dundee would put it, better than average. 
But what are my personal thoughts of the case? I don't think he stands a chance in hell of winning this case. There are so many things that I see wrong on the face of this case from, well, let's just start listing a couple of them. One, the citing that the Twitter and Facebook have violated the constitution and the first amendment, despite the fact that they are not state actors. But more importantly, he's going after section 230. Here's why that's a problem. He wants the law declared unconstitutional. However, his lawyers, for some reason, chose not to name the United States government as defendants. I'm, I wonder, I'm going to give his lawyers the benefit of the doubt that they've tried to get him to agree to certain things, but that he refused. He said, no, I want you to do this and this, but not that. So I'm willing to bet that they were not going to put section 230 into this complaint. That's my theory. My theory is that he said, no, you have to put section 230 in this complaint. Further, I believe they then said to him, okay, we will put Section 230 in this case, but then we have to sue the government. And he said, no, no, don't sue the government, just put Section 230 in. Now, at some point, maybe they're like, okay, he's paying us enough, let's just do what he says, let's just get this easy money, get the, this case will soon be thrown out on several grounds, including like that part of the, the, the case itself, like you're trying to have a law declared unconstitutional, and you haven't even named the 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 United States is a defendant. In addition to the problems with, you know, his argument that Facebook and Twitter have violated the First Amendment, even though they're not Congress, they're not state actors, therefore they're not liable uh, and subject to the First Amendment. And Facebook and Twitter are actually expressing their First Amendment rights. You see, had Donald Trump filed this case on breach of contract, that could potentially be a game changer because then he can say that they are not adhering to their terms of service and use that as the basis for filing this lawsuit. However, if you look at the Twitter terms of service, this is why that's a problem. The Twitter terms of service explicitly say that Twitter can terminate your account and your access to Twitter for any and no reason at all. There goes the case. There goes a breach of contract case. You see, there are several things, several dangers that we have to worry about. And one of the biggest dangers is interestingly enough, referenced by Donald Trump in this case. You see, in his desire to win, he actually revealed one of the key parts of the game, one of the key problems. He talks about how democratic lawmakers threatened social media by threatening to eliminate Section 230 protections. So by getting rid of 230, they knew it would harm these social media companies and they knew that they could use this as leverage to get these social media companies to comply with their demands. What is Donald Trump now asking the court to do? Donald Trump is now asking the court to remove those very same protections. Let me explain. Right now, you can get on Twitter and say something about somebody. In fact, let's just take a look at what Candace Owens did recently. Candace Owens can get on Instagram and make claims about another individual that had no basis in reality or facts. But Candace Owens may be, able, may be able to be held liable. Instagram can't. If you remove Section 230 protections, then Instagram can become liable for such ridiculous statements. If social media companies, if Facebook, if Twitter, if Instagram, if YouTube is liable for the statements you make, I make, millions of people around the country make, if they are, can be held civilly and or criminally liable about statement for statements made 
by the millions of us that are users of these social media companies, how much censorship will they engage in then? Will it enable them to allow more speech or will it result in them policing our speech even further? And as what Donald Trump pointed to, what these lawmakers, Donald Trump and others are asking for in getting rid of the Section 230 protections is the death of social media. You see, not only have we been given the ability to reach all across the world now with it's, it's giving us microphones. Regular people can now reach millions and we don't need to go through gatekeepers to do so. That changes if social media dies. But it's even worse than that. Do you know how many millionaires have been made off of YouTube, of Instagram, people that have used these social media platforms to, to run businesses? It's made regular people it's a tool. These social media companies, these social media platforms have been have become tools for just regular people to drastically increase their reach and what we're able to accomplish. If that goes away, we're back to a situation where we still have these gatekeepers who choose who can be who can make money and who can't. And trust me, that is one of the greatest concerns that the government has. They don't like new money. They don't like money that they can't control, that they have not directly had a hand in building. Which is why when you have these billionaires, these tech billionaires, the government steps in and starts trying to bully them so that they can bring them to heel. Right now, we have an opportunity with these social media platforms and the opportunity to create other social media platforms. But if we allow this fear mongering, this partisan bickering to have us advocate for the removal of the protections that make that allow social media to exist. We're screwed. Our speech then becomes as limited as it was before social media and our options of wealth building become as limited. And trust me, government is going further and further in limiting options and ability for people to to build wealth and become financially independent. This is the danger we have to be aware of. This is the danger we have to fight against. And that's why whether you like Trump or not, you have to let him know what he appears to already have realized, but not completely made the connection because he made, he, he knew and he knows that social media companies are in danger if Section 230 is removed, he hasn't thought about the next step and how that screws over the rest of us. As always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you like my content. If you disagree with what I'm saying, if you think, no, Donald Trump is the greatest president that has ever lived and he's just the great man and I have faith in him, this case is going to win. Go ahead and give me a thumbs down, but don't just give me a thumbs down and run away. Give me a thumbs down and state why in the comment section. I will address it in the comment section or in a future video. I'll see you next time.